Good morning, 4C students. Welcome to chapel. We are here today with Mrs. Lee. She is here sharing the gospel with us, sharing from God's word. And she is the mom of Alicia, who is in seventh grade, Elijah, who is in fifth grade, and Enoch, who is in first grade. So we are welcoming you to chapel, and we're excited to hear about what you're going to share with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ford. It is good to be with you guys. Um, just one second. Got to get something here. Got to get something here. What's that? Oh, you want to sing happy birthday to me? That's so sweet. Why would you do that? Oh, oh, because of my sign. Oh, and this delicious looking ice cream cake. You guys are so thoughtful. Thank you. Um, but can I tell you something? It's not really my birthday. Yeah. Sometimes I just like to pretend it's my birthday because it makes me feel special. And who doesn't like feeling special? So let me blow this out so I don't start any fires. And say hello. I am Miss Ginny, like Miss Ford said, and it is good to be with you guys. Um, I remember being with you guys last year when we were in the building. I spoke about Jesus's very first miracle, which was to turn water into wine. And that's just really special grape juice. But today I'm here to talk about something a little different. Um, and it's a word that we don't use too often, but it is a word that I know you guys have been hearing, learning about, and maybe even doing this month. The word is honor. Can everyone say honor? Great job. Now, what is honor? Honor is making people feel special. It's giving respect. It's having a good attitude toward a person. Honor is treating others the way you like to be treated. So what did my birthday stuff, what did that have to do with honor? That's right. On your birthday, people honor you just for being born. They say, here's a present. They say, let me sing happy birthday to you. They say, I love you. They say, I'm so glad you were born and you feel great. I mean, next to Christmas, your birthday is probably the best day of the year because you feel honored. Side question, um, who gave you your birthday? Yep, if you said you're a mom and dad, you're pretty close, but guess what? God is the one who actually gave you your birthday. God is the one who made you. And we remember God does not make junk. God makes good stuff. God honored you by making you, loving you, giving you a birthday and saving you. But let's see what the Bible and what today's Bible story has to say about honor. If you guys look in the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, you're going to find a story about a king. His name was David. Here's King David. I hope you can see him. King David was a good king. He loved God. He honored God. God loved him. But before David became king, there was an old king named Saul. Saul was not a good king. And they would fight a lot. They fought for many years. But finally, David's army won. Saul was out as king. And David was going to come to the throne because God had chosen him to be king. But guess what? When um, the old king would die, what would normally happen? Normally, his son would become the new king. This is King Saul's son, Jonathan. Jonathan would become the new king. But Jonathan knew that God had chosen David to be king. So Jonathan honored David and said, I'm not going to be king. You will be King David. Unfortunately, in the old days, when the old king was out of power, everyone knew that the new king would try to get rid of people in the old king's family. They would try to um, kill them even. But remember, David is different. David honors people. He knew how to honor people because he loved God. Well, there was, there was one person left in Saul's family who could have been, who should have been the new king. His name was Mephibosheth. Everyone say Mephibosheth. God bless you. Just kidding. I know. I, it's a hard word to say, Mephibosheth. 
Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, okay? So Mephibosheth should have been king. Unfortunately, because everyone knew the old king would try to fight the new king, they told the old king's family, get out of town. The new king's going to come and get rid of you. So Mephibosheth, when he was a baby, his nurse was carrying him, running out of the palace, running for their lives. She drops Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth breaks his legs. They're in the... They're in the wild. There's no doctor to fix his legs. And Mephibosheth is a cripple. He cannot walk. He cannot work. He has to beg for food. He's in hiding. Don't you feel sorry for Mephibosheth? But then he hears the king wants him to come to the palace because the king David said, who is left in the house of Saul? Who is left from that family? And no one really knows yet what King David is going to do. So Mephibosheth puts on his best clothes because you have to obey the king. Goes to the palace, waiting in the doorway. What's going to happen to me? I can't walk. I'm in hiding. And now the, the new king wants to see me. Can you imagine how scared Mephibosheth must have been? But as soon as David sees him, he yells, Mephibosheth! You're here. Someone from the house of Saul and Jonathan is here. Come in, come in, stop hiding. Put on these fancy robes. Put on these beautiful clothes. Here's a ring for you. You will never have to beg for food again. You'll eat at my table. You'll have chocolate ice cream cake every day because I love you. I honor you. You will never, ever have to be in fear or in hiding again. Guys, in an instant, it's like Mephibosheth won the jackpot. He won the lottery. He went from a beggar to a prince again in the house of David. And being able to eat at the king's table was the highest honor. That was the best position you could be in. David knew how to honor people. He didn't have to honor Mephibosheth. He didn't have to rescue him. He didn't have to bring him into his palace, but he did it because he knew that's how God wanted Mephibosheth to be honored. We're supposed to be like Mephibosheth, guys. We're supposed to honor people. God wants us to honor people and not just the rich people, not just the good looking people, not just the people with the fancy cars and the fancy toys. When you see someone who's, maybe begging or who has holes in their clothes or smells a little funny. Do you think, how can I honor them? Or do you think, how can I make fun of them? When you see someone with different color skin or someone who's older, maybe like a grandma or grandpa, do you think, how can I lift them up? How can I help them instead of how can I put them down? God has called us to be people of honor. And I know you guys as 4C students are people of honor. So I just wanna leave you with two easy ways that you can honor someone today. Find someone maybe living in your house or maybe at school if you're able to go to school who you can say thank you to. I honor you. I am so thankful God has brought you in my life. And if you're not at school, you can draw a picture or a quick note, have mom and dad put it in the mail. Teachers love getting mail. Grandmas and grandpas love getting mail. And I have a special challenge for some of my really, really awesome students. And I know all of you guys are. It's hard to honor your siblings, isn't it? That's the, that's the hardest challenge of all. To tell your sibling, I love you, sister. I love you, brother. Let me do your chores for you today. Let me give you my most special candy bar today. I want to honor you because God loves you and I love you. And the second thing is this. Take a second and just pray. Say, God, thank you for the people in my life that you've given me. You know, your parents, your teachers, they're working so hard right now to keep you safe so that you can learn. They're working hard, guys, and they could use a little bit of honoring. If you go to your brother or sister or your mom or dad 
or even your teacher and you say, I honor you, they might faint with shock. You might have to sprinkle a little water on them, wake them back up again. Because right now, how we're living in pandemic, it's hard to remember to honor people. And so we just want to do that. So let me pray for us today, guys, and uh, we'll be done with chapel. But I honor you guys. I love you guys. I think you guys are doing an awesome job. You know, I know it's hard to do Zoom school. I know it's hard to do school during pandemic. But I honor you guys for not giving up, for persevering. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we honor you as the creator, as the Lord, the maker of everything in this world. We honor you for making us and for sending Jesus to die for us on the cross. We ask that you would um, help us to honor people today. Remember how to honor people today. Maybe when we're packing Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes to pray for the children who will get it and, and, and honor them. We, we, we honor our pastors and our teachers and our parents who are working so hard to teach us about you. We love you so much, God. We honor you and we honor one another, our, our fellow students. Um, we can't wait to be back together again, but until we do, God, help us find ways to honor one another and encourage each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Happy Thank Thanksgiving you. to you. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>